Aquarius rising August 2024. It looks like a month where you're focused on your financial health and well-being, as well as an important one-on-one -on -one relationship. And moving forward, we want that to include you and your BFF, you and a business partner, you and a new romantic interest, or you and somebody from the past, because it is Mercury retrograde season and it hits you the hardest. Like stereotypical Mercury retrograde is, is coming for you. <laughs> And the journey begins on the second when Venus and Leo in your seventh house of important one-on-one -on -one relationships makes a square aspect to Uranus and Taurus in your fourth house of home and family, showing a push and pull between those two. So for example, your best friend is supporting your impetus to replot yourself in a new city. In English, you're thinking about moving and your best friend has your back. <laughs> Maybe you're dating somebody and you're thinking about moving in together. Or lastly, your family dynamic is quite chaotic. Your living situation with your roommates is really topsy-turvy and unpredictable. And it's taking away from your ability to sip the sweetness um, of somebody else in your life. On the 4th, there is a new moon in Leo in your 7th house of serious relationships and Mercury retrograde begins. So new moons are new beginnings. Is there somebody new who's coming into your life? Or with Mercury retrograde right here, does someone from the past pop in and they're like, boo, <laughs> do you want to do you want to even think about maybe doing this again? On the 5th, Venus enters Virgo, your 8th house of sex, intimacy, and shared resources. Venus is about love, connection, blessings, ease. Being in your house of money shows that you're getting the financial support that you need. If you're selling a property, they're looking particularly attractive to buyers or you're just showing up, you know, in the business scene in a way that people are like, hmm, OK, yeah, I, I could do this. I could work with you from a more romantic lens, a soulmate, being in bed with somebody and feeling totally, completely seen and connected above all else. On the 7th to the 8th, there's a Mercury-Venus conjunction in Virgo. Your mind and your heart are focused either on a business relationship or someone that you completely and totally feel like, oh my God, you're it, you're it. <laughs> on the 13th to the 16th, Mars conjunct to Jupiter and Gemini makes a square aspect to Saturn and Pisces. This can show up romantically or creatively. So if you're feeling particularly creative, you want to write a book, you want to produce something and share it with the world, you will find that there there are a series of excuses that stand in the way of you creating, of you showing up and being the star of your own life. And if we, you know, pull it even deeper, there might be a belief of I can't do it. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I don't want to hear that. I, I don't want to hear that. That's no. Find a way. <laughs> if it manifests romantically, then this is someone who comes in with a bang, is wanting to hang out and see you and talk to you, very stimulating very like, woof, I'm here, but it makes you feel exposed and very self-conscious. Like there's no hiding anything from this person and it makes you uneasy. But again, move through it, right? Eyes on the prize, create, make love. <laughs> On the 14th, Mercury retrograde slips into Leo, another indicator of someone from the past, someone that you had severed ties with, whom you may have even classified as an enemy, saying, all right, you know, let's talk about this, or you are reading to re-narrate what has happened to you in your relational space. So you move from being a victor or a loser or full of shame around a uh, relational dynamic to feeling empowered and as if you've grown and learned something. On the 18th, there's a Mercury, Kazemi, Square, Uranus, and Taurus. Epiphany meets breakthrough type of energy. It's like the news comes out and it's happening for you in your house of relationships. Am I right? Yes, I'm right. <laughs> in your house of important one-on-one -on -one relationships. Someone who you care about, best friend, business partner, romantic interest, says something and it brings you clarity. It illuminates a situation in a way where all gravity goes there. Because it's not just, you know, the Mercury retrograde talking. The sun has its back. So the sun is, at the end of the day, I win. <laughs> so maybe someone does like a romantic grand gesture or says, we're going to be together. Even if it means things are changing with your living situation, even if it means like your family or my family may not like it, expect big news from your partner or for your partner or best friend, you know, you know the list. On the 18th to the 19th, Venus in Virgo in your eighth house makes a square aspect to Jupiter in Gemini. So things are going really well with shared resources uh, and investments, but squaring Jupiter in Gemini is like there's just so much going on. 
you know, there's so much going on in your day to day life that maybe it's difficult to really sit in bed with someone that you care about or to notice just how well you are being rewarded by the universe financially. On the 19th also, well, the 19th is, is a busy day. So we have Venus and Virgo opposite Saturn and Pisces retrograde, a beautiful opportunity to collaborate with someone in business is at odds with what you're able to do right now. So either you're lacking confidence in your ability to show up for this deal, or you just don't have the means. And it's like, you're a perfect business partner. I would love to do this, but I'm not financially prepared to show up for you in this way. Or more of the same where you're in bed with somebody and you are feeling like you're, you're transparent translucent at the very least. Also on the 19th, we have a full moon in Aquarius in your first house of physical body, personality, and ego. So there's a death of an ego or a completion of being somebody. I don't want to be this character anymore. I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm bored of this. You are laying down a costume for good. And I think that you're doing it in good spirits. Even though it is square Uranus, your family might be surprised. Like, whoa, you're doing that? Whoa, you're becoming this? Whoa, you're talking to who? Whoa, you're moving where? boo <laughs> on the 23rd sun enters virgo your eighth house of sex intimacy and shared resources full steam ahead we're focused on what we're doing with others on the 26th and you have to be of service to it so it's something that you genuinely care about that feeds you just as much as you feed it financial health and wellness is also something that you're working on paying taxes any outstanding debt working with people to help you get your finances in order. On the 26th to 27th, Venus and Virgo makes a trine aspect to Uranus and Taurus. If there is any outstanding debt or you're having trouble paying for something, I see your family showing up for you, but unexpectedly. You know, if you're just trying to make things happen, maybe against their will. <laughs> and they're like, you know what? I fold, I fold. Here, here's the support that you need. Or they give you a piece of information that you find really relevant and helpful. On the... 28th, Venus in Virgo makes an opposition to Neptune retrograde in Pisces. Do not be delusional about the investments that you're making, about the commitments that you're making, because Venus, Neptune in, uh, in the second is you're the person who's not being transparent. You're the person who has super high hopes. Don't wear your rose-colored glasses, do a business deal, okay? And finally, on the 29th, Venus enters Libra, our ninth house of higher education, long distance trip. So where are we going? Like we're excited. We're ready to travel. We're ready to hop on a plane. And something about this experience, because it's trying Pluto, is helping us understand who we want to be, who we want to become, or maybe even who we are. That's all I got for you. Toodles. Good luck. <laughs>